Well, you know, um, you started singing at a very young age. Um, at three, you're singing. Mm -hmm. At five, you met Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and then now you're like a worship leader. Um, you have several CDs, award-winning songs. Um, so I want to ask, when did you know, like, this singing is what I was born to do? Well, it's all I really ever knew. My whole family was in ministry, and my mom and dad sang when I was little. My mom led worship, and I just was like, that's just what I wanted to do. I just knew in my heart. And um, my dad led worship, too. And I don't know, it just was like, I just knew it's what I wanted to do forever. I loved, fell in love with the presence of God at a really young age and understood that God's presence can change your life, and He speaks to you, and he'll, His presence is real. And... So I just was like, I want to do this forever. I want to be a worshiper. And so, yeah. yeah. I know you've talked about, you know, when you're singing, you really feel his presence. Mm -hmm. um, and so for some people who think, you know, they're watching, they're like, I want to know how to enter into his presence. I want to know mm -hmm. how to worship God. Mm -hmm. um, what would you tell them? You know, worship to me is more than just music. Music really helps you say things to God that you might not know what you want to say, but a song can help you say it. And worship is just really just us saying, God, you're worthy of everything. It's us bringing our, our attention and our affection to God and to, to worship who he is. And I mean, I think that we've been created to worship. If we don't worship the Lord, we're going to worship something. You know, there's all kinds of things we could worship and, and get our, that fill our time with, you know. But the, the only thing that is life changing is God and his presence. And it's like nothing else, you know. You can't create a peaceful environment without the presence of God. It's fake and it's false. But, but the presence of God, when it's, when it's real and it's there, it's like nothing else, you know. And so I just love that that's our God, that his presence, when we lift his name, it says when two or more are gathered in his name, he's there. He's there. So. You know, so for people who maybe they don't have a beautiful voice like you, Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they want to worship. What are ways they can really enter in? Hey, it says make a joyful noise. Who knows if like their non-ability to sing is more beautiful than our ability to sing? You know, it's, yeah. to me, it's a it's an act of our heart, and it, it's just about what God says He sees inside, and He knows the thoughts that we're thinking towards Him, and so it's it's um, way more than singing, and it's just an expression to God. Some people worship with dancing. Some people worship just, um, they're just lifting their hands, you mm -hmm. know. Just, it's all about just bringing reverence to who God is. Yeah, focusing on Him. Totally. Um, I want to talk about your album, yes. your new album, Where yes. I Find You. Yes. Um, so my question is, where did you find God, you mm -hmm. know, in making these songs and writing this music? Where did you find Him? You know, this CD was a really hard season when I was writing for it and preparing to record. And it was one of those kind of moments where I was like, God, this is the worst timing for some of these things to be going on around my life. Uh, and I had to just really get on my face and, and lay down my, what I needed it to be, what, you know, I wanted the CD process to be really a lot easier than it was, but I found that it, the, the theme of everything that I was going through during that time was, was my, my theme prayer really was like, God, I need you. I need you right now. I don't even know where to begin. Would you just come and find me where I am? And, um, God is so amazing like that. We don't have to do all the work. It says to draw close and he'll draw close. Yeah. Now, something I love about your music, too, is, um, you know, you really have a heart for the brokenhearted mm -hmm. and for people who maybe don't have um, a voice. Mm -hmm. And um, can you talk, talk a little bit about the A21 campaign, mm -hmm. um, about those who are in sex slavery? Um, I just can't believe that we're living in a generation that is the most inhumane situation for these girls that are stuck in human trafficking. It says over 27 million people are caught in human trafficking and it's growing. And um, I just, I know that the Lord says that we're responsible for what we know, for what we hear. And I want to be able to do the part that I can do to not just bring awareness, because I think people are aware at this point, but to help stop it. And it's so prominent in a lot of these third world countries where people think, parents are thinking that they're selling their children to have a better life, but they're being lied to. And these uh, 
these people and these companies are taking these girls and selling them for money and they're having to provide services and it's just I just can't believe that but I can't go and do everything I mean we we can't do everything to to rescue these girls but we can do what we you can do something. You can do something, yeah. exactly. And so what I do, my sister and I decided we could design jewelry and get it made and sell it and some T-shirts. And so when I go and minister, I have it at my table, and the proceeds go towards A21 to help what they're doing, the efforts that they're doing to rescue these girls. Awesome. Now, if people, someone watching might be thinking, where can I, yeah. how can I help? Yeah. Is there a website? You can or? go on my website, carriejob.com, and then A21, it's stands for abolishing human trafficking in the 21st century okay. with a21.com and but there's lots of ministries and stuff just you got to do what you feel God's calling you and telling you to do as far as um, doing your part to have social justice and and helping others